interested in um, finding these smaller sorts of events and these kind of under more underground um, spaces in Madison. So as, uh, you know, as Megan mentioned, we did iterate quite frequently. So we knew we wanted this edgy brand and kind of played around with it until we really kind of fine tuned it. Um, and through that process of kind of iterating and fine tuning, we really were able to kind of develop a process. So that way, at this point, we're able to start designing an image and within minutes be able to add tweak pieces so that way we know exactly if it's on brand or not. Um, so it did take some time to actually get there, but we have, I have learned a ton through this. I have worked um, I, with other marketing companies as well as help design brands for other companies. So this is not just, you know, what we do for Underbelly, but it is something that, I, that we have done for um, other companies and other startups in Madison. So that's a little bit about me. And then after this, I you know, feel free to reach out or ask me questions here. Um, but I'll get started on the presentation. Let's see. Okay, are we thumbs up if you're seeing a, just a big pink square right now? On um, are we? Let's, are you guys seeing? No, now thumbs. Okay, awesome. This uh, pre. And let me know if you're no longer seeing that. So, okay, so I appreciate you all coming to this. Um, again, this is branding for artists and creatives. It's gonna be a webinar on building a strong brand and then additionally, why you should do it. So, every customer facing brand business needs a brand and every artist is a business. So this is going to be something and this idea around um, an art being an artist as a business is going to be kind of is going to be really helpful um, moving forward as we continue through this. So as you we talk about this, it's this idea that you are selling to customers, clients, grants, all of that. So as you see yourself as a business, it is going to make this process of building a brand that's not just about your art, that is really about the business of your art, is gonna make it a whole lot easier moving forward. And I will walk you through what that, how you can actually do that. But kind of first, what is a brand? So a brand in the most traditional sense is a name, term, design, symbol, or any other feature that identifies one seller's good or service as distinct from other sellers. So that is the most traditional kind of basic idea of what a brand is. This is going to be your logo. You think of the Nike swoosh, um, the colors that, you know, if you had heard about the thing with uh, T-Mobile, they had tried to brand, to trademark the fuchsia they use. Um, so a, traditionally, a brand is just all of those images that you kind of think of as a brand. Um, but I tend to actually think of it as a more robust image than just this, this thing that it represents you. It is how you tell your story to your customer as a flash in the pan. So how they, you tell it to them quickly the first time they see you, and then how your customer expresses that story to friends. It is how you make your customer feel and how you distinguish yourself from competitors. So this is a much more robust sense of what branding is. It is not just the, the logo you created or the, the name of your company. It really is not just the what, it is the, the how and then the what you, and then as well the action, the, what you do. So as we kind of continue that forward, I will discuss how you can kind of create this more um, robust sense of what a brand is and really why that benefits you as a business as well as an artist. So how does this relate to creatives? It becomes, a, it's a lot clearer when you're selling shoes or you're selling backpacking gear or whatever. Um, but as an artist, you will constantly be selling yourself to customers, clients, grants, and exhibitions. Having a distinct brand that tells your story is going to make it far easier for you to actually target the clients and spaces that fit your business best. Additionally, as you start building that distinct brand and creating that story around your business, it's going to be a lot easier for customers and potential spaces when they have a project to reach out to you when it's best fit. And so that's some of the power as a creative of having a really distinct brand and building a strong brand is that it really helps you narrow in on your clients um, as you move forward. 
So all of this is great, but how do you actually build that strong brand? And our first step really is, and this is going to seem maybe a little strange at first, but it's this idea of personifying your brand. So what you're this, I thinking of your brand as a human. So you, you know, as underbelly, as a person in itself, in its own entity, is going to make it a lot easier to apply more um, descriptions to it. So who is your brand if they were a human? What do they stand for? Who, you know, what kind of music do they listen to? Where do they go to eat? What is their favorite drink? What kind of, are they introverted? Are they extroverted? All of those things will help start to create this super strong narrative of who your brand is. In addition to figuring out who specifically your brand is, is also figuring out who your brand isn't. Really diving into things that maybe they don't stand for or that they that are in juxtaposed to you. Um, having that distinction of who you are and who you are not is really going to help figure out a, be able to create a ro more robust brand than just someone that sells shoes, someone that sells paintings. You're gonna have a strong identity to that. Now, as an artist, chances are gonna be that this is gonna be more personal to you. It is not just going to be, you are not going to just do research to find product market fit. You're not going to look up what the next biggest trends are, but being able to personify the brand separate from yourself is going to make it a lot easier as you make business decisions. So who you are can be a part of your brand, but really distinguishing that from who you are as an individual is going to make it easier kind of with this exercise and with creating a brand that personifies your art and not just you as an artist. So once you've actually broke, created this, this brand persona, once you have a clear vision of who this person is, who this entity is, maybe you've actually sketched it, maybe you can visualize who they are, this is going to make actually designing your brand a lot easier. It is gonna help you choose which colors are appropriate. It will help you choose fonts. It will help you with cho choosing your tone of voice. So when you're posting to social media, it's not just the images you choose, but additionally, it's the punctuation that you have in the text. It's if, whether or not you use emojis, do you use periods or exclamation points? If you use exclamation points, how many exclamation points do you use? If someone comments on your art, how do you respond? Having a clear person who personifies your brand is really going to help make it so that way you're responding in kind as, that, as your brand and not just as you as a person. And again, when you have this person who is really, um, distinct and robust, it will help you kind of build a logo, create a tagline. It will help you make all of these decisions without and keeping them congruent throughout. Um, for Underbelly, we knew that we were a bold brand, that we were um, more going to be more in your face, but also not non-offensive, that you were, we were going to kind of be straight shooting, but also playful. And so all of those things went into play when we were deciding what colors to choose, what fonts do we choose, how does our tonality, all of that kind of helps um, create a, a robust brand that really creates, paints a picture and doesn't just fall flat on the page. So once you have your personality that for your brand and then you've designed your brand so you've created your color palettes you you know what fonts you're going to use you know have a sense of the kind of emoji and the tonality that you use the next is actually using your brand so you'll want to make sure that your brand is uniform throughout all of your platforms and your messaging the strength of a brand really truly lies with its consistency it does not matter if you have the most beautifully designed logo, if you have the best color palette, if you have a wonderful website, if, they, if it is not an all-encompassing brand then it, and design, it is going to fall flat and it is going to be really hard for your customers and your users to really understand and be able to depict that um, to you and to their friends. So when you're using your brand, make sure you are using it on your social media. So again, that goes not just the images you post, which are one key component to it, but also the tone that you use in the text itself. This should go without saying, but your website should be on brand. Make sure the colors are consistent throughout. Make sure you have 
the same font throughout. Make sure you have the tonality throughout. All of that should be on your website. If you use a Patreon, you customize it as much as you can be if you're, you know, with the names of the tiers, with the images on the tiers. All of those can be customized and you should customize it. The same goes with newsletters. So when you're, if you have a newsletter that you're sending out to people who already have signed up and are interested in you, make sure that those are on brand. So change the color of everything. Make sure everything is in line. These people already have said that they're interested in working with you or interested in your content. And so this is another opportunity to kind of reestablish that relationship with your customers or clients. And again, this also kind of goes with marketing material. So if you have um, if you have business cards, make sure that they include your imaging and make sure it includes your logo and it looks like your website. If you are having an event, make sure that would fit within this world or it's an event that your brand persona would go to. If you are creating posters, make sure that, you know, as an artist and a creative, you are probably using your own art, but make sure that the, the material around it, it fits with the rest of the brand that you have designed. So we'll use one example of how this kind of works in the art world to give a little bit more, um, you know, rigidity to what I'm talking about. Um, and so for better or worse, let's use exam Ban Banksy as an example because Banksy has been able to build and sustain a very strong brand identity. So if you check out their website, it really actually feels like the art itself. The font feels homemade, the information included is sparse, the, the Q&A is left blank and one of the main tabs is a list that actually shows uh, shows uh, shows that are not real. So he does, they don't even include their own shows. Uh, this, all of this feels very on brand for not just their, you know, their tone and what they present, but also the art that they create around the world. And then additionally, they have a web, a hotel that even that feels like one giant Banksy experience. And while it doesn't, it, it's slightly vocal about the fact it's a Banksy hotel. It's not plastered everywhere, but yet because Banksy has spent time building this very strong brand and then translating that brand into this website, that even if you weren't aware that it was a Banksy hotel, you would know it's a Banksy hotel. So that is the power of having a distinct brand as an artist, that it really allows you to translate across mediums. It allows you to translate um, across projects and still feel like it is your work. So, you know, all of this is wonderful and it's wonderful to have a beautiful brand, but there's more than just having the, that strength of having a strong brand. It also is, there's power behind it. It helps guide your actual business decisions. So as you learn and discover more about your brand and what is and what is not a good fit will become clearer. And I know that as an artist, sometimes that is difficult because not, you don't always have the opportunity to say no to a project or you know, have your, your choices per se. But as you figure out your brand through this process, you will eventually start saying no. And being able to identify which partnerships, which clients, which projects, which collaborations fit best with, your, with what you're doing, it is going to save you a bunch of time. It's gonna save you a lot of heartache. It's gonna save you a lot of effort. And as a small business owner, as an artist, whether that is full-time or part-time or it's a hobby, your time is your most precious asset. And having a brand that helps you guide your business decision is going to be one of the biggest assets that having a strong brand can actually do for you. So the other thing that is so powerful about having a strong brand is it builds not just users and customers, but it builds loyal fans. So think about some of the brands that you know and that you love. Why do you love them? Why do you even recognize their names? We buy and use products and services all the time that we don't know where they came from, who runs them or anything. But your favorites, you know them, you share them, you follow them on social media, you recommend them to your friends, you fundamentally know why they exist. The power of building loyal fans is that you no longer have to be the, one, the only one marketing yourself. Your fans will start marketing for you. And the best way to actually build more fans is by having people who already love you talk about you. And by having that, a strong brand, it, allows some sense that the 
that your fans know you and have expectations for you. And as you live up to those expectations, you create more and more loyalty. So you might be wondering now, like, does this mean I can only make one type of art? And the answer is absolutely not. You know, as the saying goes, there is creativity that lies within constraints. But ultimately, as you learn more about your brand, as you figure out more what works and what you stand for as an artist, and not just, you know, as you see your, your art more as a business, you will be able to stretch the confines of what, that, what your art is, all while it fits within the constraints of your brand. So putting this all together um, a little bit. So this, the first step is really building that brand perso personality. So that is creating the persona that is, you know, describing it and animating the brand to figuring, really figuring out what, um, what you what you stand for what it looks like what what your tone is what the personality is all of that building out that pers persona then using that deeper understood persona that you have developed to really create tangible brand decisions so those are the color palettes the logo the um any slogans products all of those really kind of those more tangible brand decisions you can you'll be able to easily make that based off of the brand personality that you've already developed and then finally, using that brand persona plus design to really help build your gut, build your and guide your business decisions. You know, as an artist or a creator, this is probably going to be a lot more personal than simply looking for a product market fit. Your brand persona will most likely be an extension of you, and that is absolutely okay. But using this practice of personifying your brand and thinking about your brand further out as an artist will allow you to make real business decisions. Additionally, it's going to make posting to social media and Patreon and all of the other platforms that are really necessary to run your business, it's gonna make posting those a whole lot easier because you won't have to recreate the wheel every time you go to post or every time you go to create a newsletter. You will have a guide that will help you with those processes. So it'll make those sometimes less exciting or less fun tasks to running, especially a creative business, it will make those a lot easier and save you a ton of time. So I just wanted to give you a few, a couple tools that, uh, that we use as well as things that I think are really helpful. Um, the first one is Canva. This, if you aren't already using this, this is a designer's best friend. It is super user friendly. It is drag and drop. You can drop PNGs in, you can upload your PNGs and your logos and your images, and then you can design almost anything that needs to be designed. You can create brochures or social media posts or you, anything that you can think of almost can be designed on Canva itself. This, so, so this presentation I'm giving you was designed on Canva. And the power of it is that it, you can save your color palette. It keeps all of your designs in there so you can continue using and building upon it. Um, and it's also just super easy to use. Um, Hootsuite is another, is a tool for a social media planning. And we don't use it a ton, um, but a lot of people really like it because you can kind of plan out your social media posts. And for social media, it can be Facebook, it can be, I believe, LinkedIn, um, Twitter, Instagram, kind of all of those. You can create a calendar for it. Um, some people love it and love the idea of being able to plan it out. Um, some people, it, they find it more intimidating, but um, it's definitely a, a, a good and free tool. All of these tools are free to use. Um, the other one is a col coloradobe.com. This is a fantastic color palette builder. Um, you can upload one color and it will give you a bunch of options of how you can incorporate that color. So if you have one color that you really love, um, you can add that. If you have a photo that you think really represents your brand and it can be any kind of photo, you can upload that and it will pull colors for you and then create color palettes with the hex codes. So it is a super user friendly, if anything, it's just a lot of fun to play with. Um, and to see what kind of color palettes you can create. Again, and this is my email address. If you have any follow-up questions, please, you know, I'm, I'm always happy to talk branding. I think it's fun. Branding should be fun. Um, I love the idea of people getting more creative with their branding and getting more outgoing with their branding. As you see, 
our colors are bold and in your face. So um, we're, I'm always trying to encourage more people to kind of lean into um, where they might not otherwise go. So if I had given this presentation a month ago, I would have stopped there and then I would have, you know, asked you all kind of what question, if any questions and answer questions. But the truth is we're not living in the times of a month ago. So I've really gone back and forth on, you know, what do I, what is this presentation now? Are these things that I'm talking about frivolous? You know, is it important to be talking about uh, what colors you use or what kind of font you have or what the layout of your website is? Is any of that really that important in this, at this very moment? And a week ago, I might have said no, but as I've figured out, as I have thought about it more, and as I have been leaning into Underbelly specifically of, of our brand and what it means right now for us to be part of this community, it has, I have realized that so much of the reason that we are able to pivot and kind of make swift, swift and moving actions during all of these times of crises, so during COVID, during the protests, we were able to make swift decisions because of the strong brand identity that we had developed because we knew underbelly is because I know underbelly as well as I know myself that I was able to make decisions that our followers and our fans were expecting. So in a word, what does any of this mean right now? In a word, it really means everything. So I'd like to kind of go back to the beginning when I was talking about what is a brand. And again, it is a noun, it is, what, it is what you do, it is how you do it, and, and is it, ultimately it is the doing. It is how you tell your story to customers in a flat, as a flash in the pan, and then ultimately how your customers express that story to their friends. It is how you make a customer feel and how you distinguish yourself from competitors. In a little bit simpler terms, it is your company's heart and soul. It is your business's heart and soul. It is not just the colors and the website you have built. It is fundamentally why you exist. We have spent a lot of time talking about the what, what your, what your brand is and the, 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 the how, the adjective, the describe. But now in this moment, it is the time for your brand to be in action. Now is the time to do. So now, as I've say, stated, is the time for you to step up and live your brand's truths. And this isn't something just simply to do because of social pressure. It is genuinely good business. Consumers have a highly attuned BS detector and it is no longer good enough to simply have a cool brand. It is no longer good enough to have a beautiful website, though Squarespace and Wix makes it extremely easy to do so. You must understand your brand and you, and why your business exists and then you must live your brand it is no longer good enough to just say we are here for the community we are here for environment we are here for this the beauty of having a strong brand is that you have already thought about who your brand and business is you have already thought about how they would respond to situations and because you have made have had those thoughts already and you have dissected them already it makes it really easy to make action and to step forward on that. So to give a few examples to kind of iterate on, to really kind of drive home specifically what I am talking about. This is a, the ad that went kind of viral after, for Patagonia after uh, Trump announced that he was cutting the protections to bears ears. Patagonia is known for their, their environmentalism, of their political action of being socially conscious. They don't just sell their products and they have been known to tell people, don't buy more of our products. They want you to use it for, for life. They sell, resell old products on their website from other people. And so when, so when the president came out and stated that he was cutting funding from this and cutting protections, it made sense and they could immediately act on this and do a post that was powerful and stating their purpose. And not just that, their customers were expecting this. Another example is, came out last year of Nike's uh, Colin Kaepernick 
um, ad after his protesting of pol police brutality. And again, Nike has become famous for this, this being forward thinkers, this idea of just do it, of being, um, to be, for standing up. And so when they took these ads, it wasn't as much, it was a calculated risk that they were not afraid of because they knew in that they knew their brand well enough that they could make these ads and they could push forward with these, um, with these decisions without too much fear. And then of course, the most recently Ben and Jerry's post about the, the George Floyd uh, murder. Ben and Jerry's is known for their bold and um, forward thinking company, but also for their funny, quippy, um, you know, flavors and being pro um, social change and pr job protection. So when they were, they came out and did their, their post for the Black Lives Matters movement, it wasn't just that they were slightly supporting. They knew that they could come full forward because this is what customers and consumers have come to expect from them. And it has, what it allows is it creates a rallying for your fans to really come and support you even more. So kind of to sum all of that up, a distinct brand will help you know how to use your platform in times of crises, how to make a pivot, to use it as your guiding light as you continue to move forward. And because there will be more times when you need to pivot, there will be more times when crises happen, but having that distinct brand that you have developed and thought about and iterated on really will help you make those decisions and kind of lead you in that direction. Okay, that's what I have for you all. I will stop. Wonderful. Thank you, Olivia. Um, that was a lot of really great information and really thinking about how to pull that all together. Um, I know a lot of the artists out there are trying to figure out how they're putting their information forward for shows and, and bringing out their content right now. Yeah. Um, uh, I don't, if anybody has any comments, now is a good time to start putting, or questions, now is a good time to put those in the chat box. Um, but as people are thinking about what they might want to put in there, um, as you were talking about that branding piece, what do you think about the mission, vision, and values piece? Um, is that something you see as important to add either to your website or your social media pieces? Yeah. Formally or informally? Yeah, I think the beauty and the, um, the beauty of have, you know, the mission, vision, and values is definitely an important part to have. Um, I think as a and it really kind of goes either way that you can have it on your social if you have it on your website that make sure that it's something that you live by um so i a lot of companies kind of see them as separate i definitely think that you should be building your brand around your mission vision and values that they are something that kind of coexist together because your brand ultimately is just telling the greater story of what you're doing and your mission vision and values really should be guiding those decisions um so i think that having it on your website um, is going to be something where it's accessible. I think it's important for people to, um, to know it, but it's more important that you, that you yourself actually know it and that you're living by it. So if you don't have a clear mission, you know, traditional mission, vision, and values that um, I don't think it's imperative to have it on your website because I think it's more detrimental if you post, if you have that and then you don't live by it than to have one that you've quickly scrapped together that is, um, that then doesn't really mean anything. And then I do have a question from James. If anyone doesn't know what uh, Patreon, it's a really great question. It is a platform that allows you to um, kind of receive direct payments from, um, from your fans. So you can, uh, you can have different tiers, payment tiers. So you can offer different kind of levels at what you can offer your fans. So it can be, it starts off as low as a dollar a month and it's a subscription model. So you can say a dollar a month and that's just for people who want to just support you, but you can kind of go up to whatever you want and offer things um, for, you know, commission, you know, maybe getting monthly commissions or goodie bags, or it really is um, kind of like a creator's playground of what you want to, what you have as a creator and what um, it's kind of a direct way to engage with your, with your fans and have them directly support you. Um, Patreon does all of the billing, do they do all of the whole management side of things? Um, and so it's an, it's a kind of a platform. So. Is it a similar platform that you would use um, to do like with your inventory or is it more of an engagement tool 
and with product and services and potentially just a support mechanism to have a somewhat steady stream of income. Yeah, more of it's kind of a platform to for discovery. It's kind of um, if you imagine people paying for your Instagram, but then also pot potentially receiving goods. So it kind of ties a whole bunch of things together. So you can have, you know, kind of private um, kind of live streams that you can kind of have one-on-one -on -one conversations with you and your fans, or you can even, um, they really kind of provide, make it really easy, um, but I don't believe they do inventory on it. So that really is probably more on your end. But I could be wrong with that. They might have an, they, there might be an inventory for a higher tier. Gotcha. Um, so I have a couple questions coming in. One of them is, I want to build my brand, but I want to create art and I have a, a full-time job or even maybe a part-time job. Um, so how much time do you think I need to spend on my arts administration each week? Yeah, I mean, that's a really fair question. And I don't think there's like a set solid answer, which I know is kind of a cop-out, but honestly, I think you can kind of do it in bits and pieces. I will be really honest and say that when we first started Underbelly, that we didn't have a really strong cohesive brand. We had a really strong idea of what we wanted to look like, but it really did take the iteration of figuring out, testing things, showing it to people and really gauging reactions um, to make it more cohesive. Um, so I would say, honestly, doing the exercise, you know, of creating a brand personality and a brand persona, and that shouldn't take you a ton of time. That shouldn't take you more then, I mean, I think we spent maybe a half hour on it. And that's something you can kind of come back to and, and push and pull. And as you, as you figure these things out, it will really help you. Um, it'll really help you kind of, you know, moving forward as you, it'll become easier, I guess, as you go with it. I mean, if you mean by arts admin, if you mean like social media and like that side of things, um, the key with social media in particular is consistency. Um, so don't try to bite off more than you can choose to. So like, don't commit yourself to posting three days, three times a week. Um, because it's gonna be easier if you post once or twice a week, but it's every, it's always once or twice a week. Um, that's gonna be a lot easier because you don't want to make this miserable. And like, that's part of having a strong brand is like, even as someone who primarily focus like works on social media, like it's stressful to post on social media and it's, it's exhausting and it's not always what I want to be doing. Um, but having a strong brand um, to be like, okay, we know this is the kind of tone, we know this is the kind of format, and then knowing also how much you can kind of bite off realistically, especially if you have another job, you know, just do it maybe twice a week, do it once a week, maybe post more to stories um, because it, it, it requires a little bit less, um, it's less permanent, it goes away after 24 hours, but it's a great way to kind of en engage regularly with your, with your fans. Um, the other really great thing is, you know, po tagging, posting with other people. So liking other people's comments, that's another good way to like re-engage. It takes a little bit less um, effort. Um, as a general, I would say, you know, maybe an hour a week, um, a couple hours, if you're first getting up, you know, kind of figuring it out. Um, and, you know, it will get easier. It will get a lot easier as you, as you do it more. That's yeah, that's, that is true. Um, <laughs> and, <laughs> um, Never does yeah, and before, but. yeah, yeah. Uh, another question is, um, how important is it for an artist to have a logo, especially, um, visual artists with where their art might be telling their story, um, or being part of their brand, but the specific logo piece. Yeah. I mean, it's really up to you. I don't know if it's like super necessary. I think some people really like having a logo cause it feels, um, there's a certain level of like professionalism, I think that people feel with having a logo. Um, but I don't think it's necessarily, especially um, with artists being, you know, your Instagram handles or your artist name sometimes becomes more, um, more well known than your logo. If you have a tag, you can also use that as your logo. Um, we have a logo, but I don't think that's what we're most known for. Um, we're probably more known for some of our other images beyond just our logo. So I think if you have more cohesiveness in some of the, in the imaging itself, that like actually having that logo um, as a visual artist becomes less important. Um, but also I totally understand if you want a logo to um, put on your, on your business cards because it, it does feel a little bit more official would be my. Got it. Yeah, it does give you that level of professionalism yeah. Um, and cohesive look. 
Yeah. Um, so another question I just got, I'm going to paraphrase it. Yeah. Um, it the individual has been doing some projects and it's projects they feel good about, but they most, they maybe aren't um, really part of their brand, but still feel like it's important to be working on these projects. Yeah. Do you think it's important or would be beneficial to create a separate brand for that type of work um, and have different branding for those um, opportunities so they don't lose clients, but maybe don't confuse the two types of work that they're doing? Yeah, I, I think, I mean, I think it can kind of depend on what your art, you know, how separate they are, right? So if you are a primarily, for instance, a portraitist, and that is your main art business, and you are now doing something, you are engaging with a nonprofit that is not anything to do with your portraits, you, you absolutely, I mean, you can, the, the struggle that obviously creating more brands is that it just becomes, um, becomes more work is kind of the end game. Um, and so if there's a way you can tie them in together where, where they're, but they don't um, completely butt heads, I think that's okay. And I know it kind of sounds counterintuitive to kind of what I was just pitching, but I think if you kind of reflect on kind of deeper of like what your brand persona and what your art brand, your business persona is, um, you might not see that they're as juxtaposed that they might initially feel. So as you kind of build out that person, you might realize that it actually fits in that umbrella. Now, that being said, it's also kind of basing it off of, um, it's hard to make that assumption, but um, building more brands and more social media, the only, the tr struggle is, the benefit is that you can be more brand specific and you can be really honed in. The struggle is you you may have potentially doubled your work and also that you're splitting your audience. Um, because as we know, social media, um, the more likes you get, the more follows you get, the more you rise to more people's um, feeds and you get, it's easier to get discovered. And so it's that, it's that weird, it's a kind of that, is it make, is it beneficial to kind of have all of those people under one roof and figure out a um, branding and a persona that might actually fit all of these things together? Um, or are they too juxtaposed where you're like, they don't actually make sense, like they make sense in my head together or they make sense because of I'm passionate about this side thing, but like they're just too contradictory to actually put in one space. It's that that makes sense. It's almost like having um, different pages. I'm gonna use a website as an example, but different pages on your website for your paintings and your photography and your commission work. Your commission work may not be about you because it's really yeah. you creating what the person is asking for. Yeah. Um, so maybe that sort of. Um, looking at it as special orders, commissions, like these are all my unique one-off types of things, although it does fit under my umbrella of me as an artist and all the different disciplines that I might be creative in. You could be a musician and a painter. Those 100%. are different, but... They kind of fit. And also remember that, you know, as you, you should, and it would be a good thing to do, is like have a personal account and have a business account. So, and that is another good way where it's like, if this side project that you're doing that you're passionate about and that you think is important is you can do, you can share that on your personal account, but maybe it doesn't go on the business account because again, it's kind of making that mental shift of seeing your art as a business and not just seeing it as the art that you create. Um, and I think that will help too. So that might be another good way to kind of go around it where you can still promote your stuff, but if it doesn't, if it doesn't really fit the rest of your content, that posting it on your personal account might be a better space for it. Or you fit, or you fit it in the personal umbrella. <laughs> it's, when I started, um, when Facebook really started, I was just starting my art gallery and I started my business page under my personal account and realized very quickly that they <laughs> were two very different things. And okay. I was going to be speaking in one voice um, through my business and a different voice through my personal. I yeah. didn't share my kids' pictures on my business page unless they were wearing clothes that were made by local artists. Exactly. Um, exactly. You know, so. And so that also goes with the kind of the creating the tone um, for your for your business page. Um, and also on Instagram, they make it really, really easy and having a business account is free and you get a lot more analytics with it. So if you don't have a have an arts a business arts page, um, that is definitely have a great first place to start. Um, because you can, you don't have to have like separate logins for it. It keeps you all logged in and you can actually see the analytics, um, which you can't do that with your personal account. Um, 
So yeah, so if you don't have that, that's another great space to start. And for business, it is good to have those analytics because that will certainly help you guide your business decisions so you're not wasting your time. Um, if nobody's looking at your post, you can kind of pivot, um, as you mentioned earlier, Olivia. Um, I do have another question that came in, so we'll take one, maybe two more questions um, uh, before we uh, get closer to eight o'clock here. Uh, what is your experience locally and how your brand has been recognized? So yeah. Maybe some examples. Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, kind of the, I touched a little bit on the, um, specifically on the, the zines. So those were kind of really where we started practicing and playing with our brand. So our, the zines that we released, and this was kind of a lead up to our, um, to our app launch that we had. Um, we, they were a weekly printed zine that we kind of distributed around Madison. And we had them, um, it started off at like 10 locations, like, like businesses for free. And then we, at the end, we had about just over 20 businesses that we dropped off these, these little magazines every week where we highlighted artists and events and businesses. Um, and through that is really where, where we started iterating on what our branding looked like. Um, so that was the first time that, you know, when we had our launch party, we had people who started coming up to us and say, I have all your zines. Like, you know, as, as we were putting them out into the world, we were picking them back up so we could see which ones were returned and which ones were not. And so that was the first time we were like, oh, people are resonating with this. People are picking these up and collecting them and sharing them and posting about them. Um, so that kind of started it as a really, really small taste of it. Um, but then as we started, we started having people um, reach out to us. So you could kind of get a taste of it in our presentation with some of the graphics that we have and the colors that we have. Um, but then we started having people, um, businesses and, uh, and event organizers reach out to us to have, to create zines for them. So if they were, we worked with Majestic and host and created for their, uh, respect showcase, we created a specific zine for them for, for that. We had another, we had a couple other projects this summer, um, that people reached out and were like, Hey, we would love to, um, you know, would you mind creating us some, some original art or um, original pieces to promote these events. So that was kind of when we started getting additional people. And then it just kind of came to the point of people um, having people like, hey, I saw an image and I hadn't seen it before, but I was like, I think that's underbelly. And be like, oh yeah, that's that's underbelly. Um, and it, you know, this kind of goes um, as you as you post more and share more and kind of really hone that in, you'll be able, you know, for us, it was the point of like, oh, we need to add this kind of weird tweak or we need to make it brighter or, it, you know, we need to add some weird kind of funny, dark humor to it. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know if that actually answers your question at all, but um, that was kind of some of it. We are working on a few other projects. You know, we've had other projects where people come to us um, specifically more for like commission things that are like, hey, we'd love to make zines with you or we're interested in, um, you know, in a collaboration or a lot of it has been, you know, a lot of events that we do. It's a lot of, you know, collaborative events. Um, so yeah, so that's, we're still known to a lot of people for the, being the people who made the zines. Um, so, and we, we still make zines, so we're happy with that. So it sounds like you can't just rely on your social media or being behind the scenes, but you gotta get out there in the world and start connecting there. and collaborating. Um, mm -hmm. And I'd say, right, you know, right now that that's a little difficult, right? Because we're all used to hopefully relying or trying to get out there in shows and being out there in the public and having to shift a little bit more to social media. Yep. Um, but as, as things are shifting through our phases to our, our more full reopening, we'll be seeing some of those um, in real life uh, sure. opportunities again. But um, what do you think, uh, just I guess for one last question, since you know social media is only one way, mm -hmm. are there other chat rooms or ways that you've found that you've collaborated with people in the digital landscape right now, um, yeah. in the virtual landscape? Yeah, so we've been doing like, well, there it's like, we've been, we were doing a weekly call where I was with, uh, called Conduit with Jennifer Bastian and um, Scott from Tone. And so like, that was one way we were talking with you and really doing collaborative um, projects on, on that side of things. Um, and that was just through kind of reaching out. And so a lot of it has started on social media. Um, so it's like, you know, it's, most people don't have each other's, you know, I don't have that many artists 
um, phone numbers that I can text, but um, it is easy enough to reach out or a direct message to an artist and say, hey, we're doing this project. I would love for you to be involved. Um, for one example, we were doing these mini episodes um, with artists called Underbelly Calls, where we just call, would call up FaceTime an artist and have like a 30 minute call about kind of what they were working on before COVID, what they were working on you know, now, and then also kind of what do they hope to see in the future. And so we were able to kind of have more of those, you know, those independent, those one-on-one, -on -one, they were FaceTime, so they were, pretty intimate because it you know talking to a person that you don't know via facetime and um so i found that social media can be a really great like introductory place a place where you kind of make those those connections um but you know being able to kind of bring it off that out of that space i think between zoom between um email between all of those things um i, I think it's going to become easier to collaborate as people are more used to doing online collaborations um, I think it's been weird right now because people aren't used to doing online collaborations. Um, but I do think that it's gonna become more normal. And I think that's a, there's a huge opportunity in that to reach out to different communities and reach out to different cities um, really as we move forward. Um, and this is, this is just more normal. Well, I think you made a good point. You have to be the one to put yourself out there. Um, it's not always gonna be coming to you. So if you are engaged with something that you think looks interesting, even just commenting and liking their post. Um, I know I've certainly had people say, oh, you, I saw that you liked my post. I was like, oh, you're looking, that's awesome, yeah, good. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and for your fellow artists, you know, if you see something or small businesses across the board, um, the easiest thing you can do is like and share their post. Exactly. It's no, no sweat off your back, but it can go really far for their brand. So as you think about your fellow artists out there that you know, um, or even Dane Arts and the posts that Dane Arts and Dabble is making, the more we can share that information um, out there with the world, um, that is helpful. So I would say after this, make sure you get on Facebook and like Underbelly um, and maybe follow them on Instagram, um, as well as um, anybody that you see on here that you might recognize. Um, you are, you're welcome to drop your business name in the chat down there if you want other people to maybe follow you on your social media and um, learn about what they do and possible collaborations that you might be able to partake in. So you can use that if to everyone um, would be a good way to share that information um, right now and we can capture that as well. Um, so this, uh, thank you so much, Olivia. That was really a lot of great information. Um, and I just wanna take a, a couple minutes at the very end here to talk about um, Who's bringing this to you? We, um, this event is brought uh, to you by Dane Arts and Dane Arts is our uh, Cultural Affairs and Arts Commission for the county. I'm um, in the heart of county government and Dane Arts, um, their vision is we talk about mission, vision and values. Their vision is to have um, all Dane County citizens represented leading ex um, expressive lives in connection with one another and with a mission of engaging, participating, connecting people, and inspiring expressive living in Dane County. So you are all part of this because you're a Dane County artist and creative person. Um, and artists, we use that really broadly in Dane Arts. It could be visual, music, theater, dance, um, all sorts of um, disciplines. Writing, um, we've had a number of writers join us on some of these workshops, and we will have a writer's workshop coming up um that'll be a limited number of participants but it will be coming up so stay tuned um and i do uh want to let you know that our next workshop is going to be on july 1st we did and thank you all for accommodating our shift um with our timing and our week we felt it was really important that we um take a moment of pause and um, support the um, movement that was happening out there in the black lives matter um, movement and support that. So um, we are going to shift and wait until July 1st to let our calendar get back to its normal um, normal space, but then we'll be doing these workshops every other Wednesday um, from July 1st forward um, from 7 to 8 p.m. And we're working on our next workshop, but I think it will probably be something about, we're gonna just have to settle it, but it will be about most likely uh, Kiva lending and so that is a zero interest loan, um, crowdfunding loan source. Um, and there may be some matching dollars available. Um, and it's a way for you to, maybe you need to purchase a new printing press and you're just don't have the cash on hand, or you need to um, 
buy some new materials or you want to apply for a show. Um, there's a lot of great ways that you can use Kiva um, as an opportunity. So um, we're looking ahead to some of those and um, make sure you visit danearts.com and sign up for their newsletter. That is where you're going to get all the straight information from Dane Arts about funding opportunities, grant cycles, more on these workshops, um, other commission things. When Dane Arts is looking for artists, they're going to use that newsletter as a platform to outreach and share information. So if you want to be in the know, make sure you check that out. Um, and Dane Arts uh, has been doing some funding with their Dang grants, D-A-N-G um, grants. And so that is a great opportunity to help you continue moving forward as you're affected here through COVID and as we come out um, on the other side. Um, I had with me today, Sarah, and then Mark, the executive director with Dane Arts and Adelia. Um, they're all with uh, Dane Arts and part of our Dabble team here, the Dane Arts by Local Initiative. And um, we're the ones uh, behind um, providing this workshop series. We did a pivot this year from our um, normal uh, art fairs that we had been running and we pivoted to the educational component because we know artists are still trying to fill their toolbox with, with skill sets that they can have to build their brand, build their business and um, grow as a professional artist. And again, we use professional. If you call yourself an artist, you're an artist and you are a professional. If you are making stuff and you don't call yourself an artist, you're still an artist. So own it and um you know and and reach out and let us know if we can do anything to help you and olivia did give her contact information sarah is over there fill in the chat box with information we will follow up this event with um, a follow-up email that will have this presentation as well as other materials and links um, as well as a feedback form and we would love to hear from you if you have a workshop that you would like to teach reach out to us and we'd be happy to see if we can work out a way to have you be one of our presenters. It is a paid gig. Um, we believe in paying artists for their work. So um, reach out to us and let us know if you have something that you wanna share with, um, with the arts community in Dane County. And with that, it is 8 p.m. and we wanna stick right to our timeline. So you all have a great night and we really appreciate you being here. Thank you so much, everyone.